This is the Business Experience Show, where we talk to entrepreneurs about the challenges and successes of starting, owning, or operating a business. Welcome to the Business Experience Show. I'm your host, Lisa Caprelli. We have co-host Brian Gaps. Today we're talking with Stephen Christensen. He's founder of Teen Entrepreneur Academy. He's also the Dean of the School of Business at Concordia University in Irvine. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa and Brian. Glad to be here. Hi, Stephen. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about Teen Entrepreneur Academy. How did that get started? Well, it got started, uh, I read a research report about high school students and the issue of unemployment in high school students. Gallup did a survey that said 85% of high school students in America wish they had more business education in high school, and 80% said they wanted to start their own business. Now, it's not that the high schools are ignoring business education, but they have so much other things that they're teaching. So I thought to myself, well, I'm teaching entrepreneurship already in the MBA program. I already have some curriculum material. And so I was thinking, how could I help address this issue? So the idea came to me to run a summer program for teens who want to start a business. And I started doing a little research on summer programs and the fact that Concordia University, we don't have summer school. We have the dorms available to us. So it was sort of like, here was this problem Somehow I've got this background uh, prepared to offer a solution and the idea was born and uh, actually the first time I came up with the idea it was called the Youth Entrepreneurship Academy. But then as I refined the idea and talked to others, including teenagers, they felt that the word youth uh, connotated sort of a younger age group. And so we talk about how do you name a business and how the business name relates to what you do. So we suggested working with the teens, the Teen Entrepreneur Academy, because it's a very descriptive name, and based upon that, you can figure out what it is that we do. So a lot of the things that you teach, you have an actual practice with the Teen Entrepreneur Academy itself. Yeah, what we do is we try to practice what we teach and uh, try to engage the teens in it. And um, so that's how we sort of came up with it. I went to a high school, uh, actually in Santa Ana, where they have a, a, a business academy already going at Century High School and I'm one of their advisors and so in that classroom teens already form businesses they form groups of three and during the course of the year they create hypothetical companies they don't actually do selling but one person is the CEO one person is the VP of marketing one person is the VP of HR and then the CFO and they create these hypothetical companies so I partner with them so I use them sort of as my beta testing and idea group they actually even help design the logo I want to point out this is your. This will be your third summer. This will be our third summer. Doing Teen Entrepreneur Academy. And actually, so every year I get uh, four or six kids from Century High School. Uh, this year we have about 65 registered. We had 40 the first year, which not bad. First year out of the gate, right. unknown program, um, and then 65 year two, and we're at 65 right now. And so let's just up at let's describe for the person watching this. Maybe their mother, father, they, they know their ch child has an interest, their teenager has an interest in starting up a business one day, or maybe they're watch maybe you're a teenager watching this and, and you're very entrepreneurial driven. So describe for us, uh, first of all, they're gonna go to your website. They're gonna go to the website, cui.edu slash T E A. Okay. And describe what they can expect. It's five day it's a five day program. They come to Concordia University. Yeah, so it uh, the uh, program starts on Sunday afternoon. The parents drop them off at 1 o'clock, and it concludes on Saturday morning, uh, 11 o'clock after graduation. So they come, and they uh, actually it's sort of a, a college immersion experience. So it's entrepreneurship and college at the same time. They live in the campus. They live in the dorms. They attend our uh, classes and training in the same classrooms that the college students learn. Yeah. So they're actually in high school going to college. How exciting. And, um, and they live uh, on the dorms, uh, groups of four, four per room. Uh, of course, you know, males in one section and females in the other. And then I use uh, recent college graduates as the chaperones that handle the overseeing of the dorms and the administration of the program while I oversee the curriculum and, and the speakers in the presentation. And it's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful campus and people can go take a tour for free, right? Yeah, anytime they can come visit our campus. We're in Irvine in the Turtle Rock community up on top of the hill. Uh, it's a gated community. The city of Irvine, uh, nine years in a row, safest city in America. And it's a bit isolated, which uh, you want with teenagers as well. Well, it is. It's isolated and on the top of the hill, so you don't have any distractions. They can't run to the store on the corner or what have you. Um, and actually, we collect their car keys because if you're a senior in high school, you might have a car, right. right? But there's no cars allowed. And if you end up 
driving yourself, we collect your car keys because nobody leaves the campus. Stephen, what age can you be to attend Teen Entrepreneur Academy? So they're for high school students. So it's anything from incoming freshmen to a senior in high school. So it's usually 13 to 17 years old. And as we uh, do the rooming, we room them by age groups. So we don't have a 13 year old with a 17 year old and all this. So we group them by schools and age categories. And I imagine people sometimes come in as friends. They come with their friend and you make arrangements for that. As yeah, well. So the friends can stay together. Right. Uh, right now, we have students coming from six states and three countries. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so who typically sends their kids to this? Would it be entrepreneurs or not necessarily? People who've lived the corporate life and want their kids to maybe experience something different? I imagine you, you get all of that. It's a variety of people. Um, I talked to a lady yesterday, and they have a family business. And they have children who are in high school, and they want them to get engaged in the family business. And they wanted to know if this experience would help them. And of course it will because we deal with financial literacy, we deal with startup budget, they'll hear terms that they'll hear in the family business. And so they'll actually go through identifying customers, selling products, everything that the family business does. So they're going to be trained to take over the family business if they want to go that way. So that's one is the family business owner or the entrepreneur or it's the parent who might work for a regular company, but they see in their son or daughter this entrepreneurial spirit. They're always selling something, whether that's mowing lawns or iced tea, or, and they see that they have a propensity for it. So somebody asked at the schools, because I work with high schools, and the teachers select the students for me. So one new school that we have a partnership with, the teacher called me up and he said, well, what type of student are you looking at? Is there a grade requirement? Do they have to be A students, B students, C? And I said, there's only one requirement, and you will know who they are. And that is that they have a desire and an interest and a mindset for business and entrepreneurship. You'll know who those students are, how they, when you talk about business, their eyes light up. So I want the person who has that spirit in them. And if they're a C student, like I was, that's fine. So there is no grade requirement. The only requirement is passion in their heart or an idea in their mind. And what a, what a great thing for any teacher to nominate a student. Yeah, and they know them best, so that's why I defer to the, to the teachers for selecting uh, the students. So, and let's walk through a little bit about what the uh, Teen Entrepreneur Academy includes. What happens when these students get there? Well, the first thing that we do on day one is we sort of, uh, you know, we have classes every day. They have breakfast, lunch, and dinner on the campus. So we, uh, breakfast is 7.30 to 8.30. 8.30 we get into the first class. So we have 45-minute uh, classes uh, all the way through the day. And uh, the first thing we focus on in the morning is really a mindset shift. We want to begin to inculcate a free enterprise mentality. We want to begin to train them that every single student who is there can be successful. So regardless of their circumstances in their neighborhood, at home, when they come to this campus and they participate in this camp, every single student has the ability to be successful with their own business if they work hard, they get the education, training, and discipline. But if you look at America, people who are successful, they were focused on it and that it's, it's not like they have to have been given resources and money to be successful. That if they're persistent, they can be successful. So the first thing is mindset shift. And on that note, it doesn't matter where you live, what your socioeconomic background is. No, I actually asked them a question. I said, uh, I, I asked them to raise their hands if they had a, uh, they participated in the decision as to where they were born and when they were born. None of us did. <laughs> That's where we came from. The most important thing is where are we today and what are the decisions and choices we're going to make going forward because from this point forward as, as teenagers, young adults, they're now responsible for their life and it's the decisions and choices they make. And if they decide they want to start a business, then we're there to give them the tools and all of the things that they need to be successful in starting a business. So first thing is mindset shift. And then uh, somebody asked me, well, do they have to have a business idea to come to the camp? Um, and the answer is no. So maybe half the students already have in mind a business idea for something they want to start, but the other half want to learn the principles of entrepreneurship and how to start a business. And one of the things you do is you help them understand what decisions go into deciding which business to create. Right. So one of the exercises we do is how to identify opportunities. Okay, so we do an opportunity uh, exercise uh, and they work together because the shortage is not in ideas, there's a ton of ideas. It's sorting out which idea is actually valid that's meeting a need or solving a problem somebody has. So we also begin to train them to identify problems 
as opportunities. Now we welcome problems. We're looking for problems to solve. And every problem is an opportunity. So that's the entrepreneurial mindset. A problem is an opportunity. At the Teen Entrepreneur Academy, each year you have amazing speakers reaching out to these teens and really touching them and really hitting home their business successes. Give us some examples of your past speakers. Okay, I'm glad you talked about speakers because that is a differentiating feature of our Teen Entrepreneur Academy with other ones. The first year I had the Academy, and as an entrepreneur, every year I review what we did and I learn from it. So the first year, we have speakers coming in. And just because you're the CEO of a company and very successful and 55 or 65 years old and you have all these employees and $100 million, mm -hmm. um, and you might be a great speaker for the employees at your company or for potential customers, but now we're teaching teenagers. And the teenage brain is different. So every seven to eight or nine minutes, the modality needs to change. So I have sort of revised these speakers that I begin to bring in. Right. I'm bringing them down in age. I think this year I have very few who are over 30 because I want the teenagers to be, better be able to relate to them. See, as adults, we'll hear this great speaker who's got this great company. And we'll hang on every word and take notes because we're committed to lifelong learning and our self-improvement. Teens are still distracted and they're trying to figure out why do I need to listen to this guy and some tune in and tune out. The other thing that I've done is talk to the speakers. I've sort of given them a speaker's guide that whatever, so we begin to talk about what's the learning outcome you want in your 30 minute presentation. Right. And then how do we know we're going to accomplish that outcome? And then also the first year I was in auditorium seating. Well in auditorium seating it doesn't lend itself to moving around and working in groups. Now we're in round tables, groups of six or seven. So I say to the speakers, start with your key points, but then as you go through your presentation, somewhere about minute seven, eight, or nine, you need to ask them a question that they are then going to work in the group and answer together and then give you the feedback as to the conclusion they reached so that they're in an experiential learning environment as they get going. So I've changed the speakers, but I've had CEOs. I mean, one of the most popular ones, of course, is Wing Lam, founder of Wahoo's Fish Tacos. Oh, yes. um, we had two other young guys who sold their company at 23 years old for $20 million. And so they'll come in and, and, uh, and then I have, uh, I actually brought in a high school student who had a first patent while she was in high school. And it's very interesting because she had a patent on, um, in the bottom of jacuzzi, sometimes when girls go swimming, their hair could get stuck in the drain and they could drown. And her sister used to tease her that that was happening to her. So the sister came up with an idea to put a propeller, a metal propeller, inside there so that when the jacuzzi drain is going, if your hair got stuck, it would cut it. Great idea. So she has a patent. She's in local, like here, Irvine High School. Great. Fantastic that she has the patent. But then we talked about what's the go-to market strategy. Right. Well, she was an inventor. That's why she invented that. The difference between the inventor and the entrepreneur is the go-to-market strategy. So to have a patent is a great first step, but unless you know how to take that patent and go to the market, right. whether you're licensing it, manufacturing it, outsourcing it. So we talked about the difference between the inventor stage and the entrepreneur this stage. This is the idea stage, and we often hear people say, I have a million dollar idea, Lisa, or you know, this idea is worth four million, and we say, okay, it's an idea. The execution is worth a million or four million dollars. It's not the idea. And that, that's where we spend most of the time on our curriculum, is on the execution. We um, teach the lean startup methodology, and uh, our focus is on the customer development model. We need to know who is your customer. And some students will say, well, everyone. <laughs> everyone is no one. Right. We need to, they actually do a customer profile of age, income, geography, demographics, psychographics, uh, religious preferences, all of these to identify that ideal customer. So then we can do the survey to find out where their target market is, how large it is. Uh, they do industry trends. Is the, is, is the industry they're in growing, shrinking, government regulations, training? So the whole thing is driving them to putting together a PowerPoint presentation um, of their business. It's sort of an investor presentation that they present in the business plan competition. Oh, they love the business plan competition. Describe that. That's the last day, yes? Yes, the last day. And what they love about it is they win money. The best business plan wins $1,000, the team wins $1,000, and so every team gets to present, and they're usually teams of three or four, and so they put together this presentation. So they're doing their, their research all week, getting ready for and that. They're working, so they're working as a team by themselves. 
They go out, if you say, for example, PowerPoint or put this on Prezi, they're in charge of their own little... Thing. Oh, they're in charge of it. Okay. I give them a template yeah. to fill in, but then they got to have to get the images, um, videos, anything that they want to incorporate into that PowerPoint presentation to help sell their product. Okay, and giving the picture, do, where do they go work on that? Do they have, do they work oh, in the dorms? Well, do well, they work all, in all the, around. Okay, we have there's, uh, there's computer labs at the yeah. campus that they could use. Some already have their laptops that they can use. Um, and so they're working on it in the afternoon, in the evening. So we have group time set aside specifically for that. So with the 12 slides, then we put together a schedule that by the end of day two, you should have these two slides done at the end of day three. So some will follow the schedule. Some might be like me and cram everything into the last day as, <laughs> as long as they can. Right. Well, I'd like that it's very kinesthetic and hands-on. Most people live, learn best by actually doing, as you said, you break them up into groups with speakers and they're actually getting involved. So that's not just going and they're just listening. They're actually getting involved. It sounds exciting for them. Yeah, and so what happens is um, there are some business academy summer programs that are highly theoretical or they'll create um, a hypothetical company and they might do uh, mathematical models and all this. Uh, ours are not hypothetical. These students actually have this idea for a business and they're creating their plan uh, and it's for something that they really want to do. So we, we give enough theory but most is you got to do the business. And so what happens was uh, in the first year I didn't have some CEO coaches so when they presented their business plan to the judges for the first time, it was the first time out of the gate. Yeah. So it was not as polished as it could be. And are, are they getting guidance every day? They're getting guidance every day, but then on the day before the business plan competition, I bring in, if we have 20 teams, mm -hmm. I will bring in 40 coaches and mentors, successful entrepreneurs, uh, business leaders, bankers, uh, sponsor companies that are already supporting us, mm -hmm. and they will spend two hours meeting with the group reviewing their PowerPoint presentation, challenging assumptions, looking for gaps, helping them practice their presentation so that when they present the next day to the judges, they're better prepared. So that happens on Thursday. So Thursday night, they're all cramming, taking all the information and repolishing up their business plan, getting ready for the presentation the next day on Friday. So on that note, if you're a business owner or you want to be a sponsor to help a Teen Entrepreneur Academy, what can you do? Same thing, you just go to the website, my email address is on there, and just send me an email and express your interest. Right, I'm sure there's many local business owners, entrepreneurs uh, that would love to be part of your program. Well, the Orange County Business Journal did a little uh, expose on the Teen Entrepreneur Academy and the fact that we're looking for entrepreneurs who would be speakers, mentors, and coaches. Mm -hmm. And I probably had six or eight emails of business owners who wanted to come in and who wanted to actually coach the kids. So, um, but then what happens Friday, the business plan competition? Friday morning, we have breakfast, the business plan competition, each team only gets 10 minutes. We've got the timer going, and at the end of 10 minutes, we'll give them a one minute warning, but at 10 minutes, we're done. Okay, right. just like in real life, right? You're going to pitch an investor, you've got the 10 minutes. Um, so probably 20 teams, 10 minutes, will present in the morning. We have a panel of CEO judges who are picking the top three plans, okay? Yeah. Then we break for lunch, we'll have some speakers in the afternoon, and the top three business plan teams are then sequestered to begin to refine their business plan because they'll have feedback from the CEOs and judges. And then Friday night at five o'clock is the final presentation where we invite the public to come, parents, donors, sponsors, anyone who's interested to actually hear the kids present their final presentation and then the winner is selected. And then we have a reception and uh, so forth. That sounds fun. It's like a sports competition. I really like it. It is. And, and actually, for the, the teams that are pre uh, picked for the final three, you know, they can uh, email their friends, Facebook, oh, you know, get, get the some, word out yeah, that, you know, tonight at 5 o'clock I'm presenting. And it's, um, I'm glad you mentioned that because we work with a lot of business owners and they understand business, but they don't understand marketing and technology uh, in the way it is done currently. But I bet these teens come in with their smartphones and their use of technology. They've got that part down. They just don't have the business experience. And so do they integrate that? Do you find them integrating that quickly and easily? Yeah, mo actually, uh, when you talk about like last year, two or three or four of the plans were for different apps that they wanted to develop. Uh, one a team wanted to develop an app that would um, disable your phone when it's in motion when you're driving so you couldn't text and drive. You know, so rather than the teen turning off the phone, which they won't do, 
you know, actually the motion, if you're going more than 10 miles an hour, the motion on your phone would actually disable it so you couldn't text. So they're already coming up with apps. Uh, the winning business plan uh, from last year was um, a, a social media promotion site working with YouTubers and developing strategies for them to get more followers and to have interaction between these, U these famous YouTubers, which is big business, and their fans interacting with them in a unique and dynamic way that I can't disclose because right. of the NDA agreement. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's the first thing we do on Monday as well when they come, is everybody signs NDA agreements. That's smart. And we explain about the confidentiality and non-disclosure and so forth. But of course, we know those are just for honest people and so forth. So, Stephen, people come to Teen Entrepreneur Academy and you are encouraging education, of course. Um, a lot of them will go on to college and they actually have a vision now, a plan in mind. And uh, we were talking about earlier that they get to use the resources of that open mind using their, their peers, their college, once they go to college, college students. Yeah, absolutely. So what happens, actually, there's been some research done that shows that high school students who participate in extracurricular entrepreneurship training programs such as mine mm -hmm. graduate at a higher rate than those that don't. And today in America, I don't know if you know this, but there's a terrible high school uh, dropout rate. I mean, one in seven high school students drop out of high school every day. And the main reason, they say, is that they don't feel like the curriculum is relevant to their life. They're trying to figure out what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So when you begin to introduce business and all of this, they could say, oh, I could see how I could use this. Now, they should be paying attention to all of the subjects. Um, so number one, we're trying to help keep kids in high school, graduate from high school, and then go to college. Actually, so last year, one of our students graduated from the Teen Entrepreneur Academy, right. went to college uh, in, in the state of Washington, and he um, majored in entrepreneurship at the college. The, uh, the college had a business plan competition. He entered the business plan competition, took first place. Wow. From there, he entered the regional competition for the Western USA, took first place. Awesome. And then went back to nationals in Washington, D.C., didn't win it all, but um, there was some correlation between the concepts that he had learned in the high school Teen Entrepreneur Academy and his readiness for college. And right now, your program, Teen Entrepreneurial Academy, is um, it's local. It's at Concordia University in Irvine, California. But you have expansion plans as well. Well, there are 10 Concordias across the USA. And um, so one of the ideas that we're evaluating and putting together a business model on, just like we teach the teens, is the opportunity to consider a licensing package to offer to other universities in other regions um, so that the students in that area uh, can have the benefit of it. Because it's really not as much about promoting the university as it is about creating a mindset shift in these young people. And small businesses. Let's not forget that small businesses are the backbone of this country. Small businesses provide more jobs, create uh, more stimulus in the economy, and every big business actually sometimes started small, right? Uh, Apple started in the garage, Hewlett Packard started in the garage, Lynx is here in Irvine started in the garage, Beckman Instrument. So they all start small, and so we're trying to um, teach them these principles so that they're better prepared. Now, my daughter. I have two daughters graduated Concordia. One of them, when she was in high school, participated in a teen entrepreneur-like program at another university. Mm -hmm. And she told me that once she went to college and studied business, she was better prepared than her classmates to relate to the business curriculum because she had been exposed to the terms. Mm -hmm. She knew what a profit and loss statement was. She knew what a startup budget was. She knew what target marketing. She knew what unique selling proposition was because she was exposed to those things. And today she's under 30 making six figures at her company. So she has that experience and that's what this camp can do for you, Teen Entrepreneur Academy. This is a skill set you could get. And it's not just for people who want to go in to start their own company, but as you said, having these tools, having that mindset helps you when you work with another company, even when you work in a corporation, having the entrepreneurial mindset and understanding can help you in so many different areas. So you're right, that's a key point because not all of them will start businesses, but when they go and work now for another company, for an employer, they're coming in the door understanding and thinking like an owner. They'll know about overhead. They'll know why the owner of this company is conscious about costs, about customer satisfaction. We want them to think like an owner and to add value to that company every day. Yes. 
Um, Steve, you wrote, education is the most effective means to change a person's life and improve a community. It is the most precious and life-changing gift we can give anyone. So that's really what we're doing. I mean, this isn't a business model of how Concordia is going to recruit high school students. It's a passion of mine. It's a hobby. I'm not paid to do it. It's something that I want to do. It's a, it's a way for me to give back um, to the young people because they're our future leaders. Right. So, you know, we, we hear people say you're never too old. Uh, conversely, we believe you're never too young to learn principles of business and, and free enterprise and self-responsibility. So that's what we're doing. And part of that is you've made this program affordable for everybody. Well, and, and we don't want finances to prevent somebody from participating. So if they have an interest, we'll find a way to get a scholarship program or some way to fund them. So probably a little bit more than 50% of our students are from low-income, at-risk communities who um, never would have this type of program available to them just because of the cost. And so uh, we have a commitment that we'll always have half of the class coming from low-income communities and we'll go raise the money from our corporate sponsors, companies, individual donors, uh, banks or other organizations so that this would be available to them. That Stephen, that's so great and I, I really applaud you and honor you for doing that because I grew up uh, poor and I would have loved to be able to watch this on YouTube or television and I would have been the one like, oh my God, I want to go to this Teen Entrepreneur Academy um, to have that. Um, I always had that entrepreneur spirit in me, you know, since I was a little girl. So, so if you are that person that you, you think uh, business could change life, you see the advantage of, of being a business owner, I really want you to go sign up for this. Uh, you can speak with Steven or any of his staff. You can go to cui.edu forward slash TEA. And, um, you know, we're going to have a great year and every year, we, we update and change the curriculum and different speakers. And so I do have people come back. Okay. Um, so last year's business plan winners, they both want to come back, but they'll come back as counselors and mentors. So then we have peers helping peers. Okay. So they'll go around helping and coaching their business plan teams with the other students as well. Yeah, so, so each year just growing and growing and you're spreading the entrepreneur spirit to the country. Well, we're creating uh, what we call teenpreneurs. Stephen, what are the dates of Teen Entrepreneur Academy in 2014? Well, we, hold it, we always hold the Teen Entrepreneur Academy the second week in July. So every year, uh, it will be that time. Great. Sometimes we conflict with other uh, summer schedules uh, people have. And I've, I've heard a mom who said, we're going to come home early from vacation so that our son uh, can get to the program there. Do you find parents wanting to be eavesdropping and, and peek in on their kids? Is that not allowed? <laughs> well, I invite them to come. Okay. Of course, the, the challenge is the teens don't want their moms around right. or dads, uh, but it is open. It's an open program. Uh, when uh, we do have the business plan competition, some of the parents do come. Uh, we have a graduation lunch and a graduation speaker, and all the parents are invited to come to that. So we do get some parents coming. Uh, some parents actually are successful entrepreneurs, and they want to talk about their entrepreneurial experience. And so I'll recruit some speakers from parents of students uh, that want to participate. Well, I could see how many people want to be a part of this. Business is the background. I have an eight-year-old, and he's, we watch Shark Tank together, and he's always talking about hashtags from you know, the businesses and things. And, and he's right on the money. On, on, you know, he's only eight. So I can't wait to send him to, to Teen Entrepreneur Academy one day. Yeah, and we, we've had um, speakers who had uh, been presented on Shark Tank yeah. and got funded so we, we have some local people that we bring in who do that but the thing that's really important about these teenagers and, and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is that teenagers are natural entrepreneurs they have a natural curiosity and inquisitiveness and innovation and creativity it's innate it's in them already right. but unfortunately what happens as they go through life and the educational system and other things people start telling them all to conform and, 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 and actually that creativity sometimes gets uh, diminished in them. Right. And so uh, we want to keep that entrepreneurial spirit alive in them and keep them going uh, because they're some of the greatest uh, entrepreneurs around. What is the number one answer or response you hear to, one, to owning a business? What is the, you know, we all know starting a business, it's, it's a ton of hours you put in. It for sure, you know, more than if you're an hourly paid employee. What is the top response you hear for someone loving owning their own business. Well, the number one reason is freedom. Right. Freedom to choose their own destiny, uh, freedom to do what it is that they love to do. Um, but uh, we know it's not easy. Uh, it's very difficult. And we talk about the failure rates. Right. And um, we talk about the fact that actually with our program, it's okay to fail. Because every time you fail, you find out what didn't work in your business. I mean, we, we do case studies. For example, PayPal. 
When PayPal first launched and got their investor funding from venture capitalists, they had one business model and one business plan. In 30 days, the guys found out that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And they met with the venture capital team and said, you know that plan that you put $4 million into? That's not going to work. We're going to go with this plan B. Mm -hmm. And the investors said, okay, well, you guys know what you're doing. That's okay. Their business model actually changed four times before they struck on the plan that is PayPal today. So failing is only telling you what didn't work and helping you pivot or modify your plan so that you can match what the customer wants. And let's not forget that today businesses, no matter at what age you start your business, it's how you get found on the internet and the web. You know, getting ranked on page one of Google is important, YouTube, all these features to any business. Yeah, and the young people, they understand all of that. Right. Um, and uh, they're real active and, and posting things. And, and Maybe things. some older businesses need to go back to, to school. <laughs> well, actually, I do have an offer out okay. to any companies that have a product or service that are targeting teenagers. If they want to come and do a, an alpha test and bring their product in and ask the teens to evaluate it, kick it around, test it, what have you, uh, they can bring it in and, and we'll do that. Uh, last year, we had Google Glass, okay. so all the kids got to try on the glass and play around with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, this year, uh, there's a, a new company out there you might have read about called Oculus, which was acquired by Facebook, an Irvine-based company, yeah. and they have the virtual reality goggles. So we're making arrangements to have those uh, developer pair of those goggles come in for the students to begin to play around with that. So we try to keep them on the front end of technology. Uh, actually, we're also looking at bringing in a 3D printer so these uh, students could see how these 3D printers work and, and all of the capability because, the, I mean, the innovation is moving in that direction already. Wow, you, you jam-pack a lot of stuff in five days. Sounds like so much fun. We do. It's a lot of fun, um, but you have to because the teen mind is moving, moving, moving. Right. Their mind operates different. Um, since 1975, uh, the sort of the whole educational paradigm has changed because you had that traditional rote education, but their mind works differently today, and so the educational experience has to be different with the activity and the inter interaction and, and all of this. So they're, they're the Internet generation. Um, so it wasn't like when we were in school, and uh, so we, that's what we try to adjust to so that our curriculum matches the teen mind. And the business landscape has changed dramatically as well. Right. So you talk about traditional business. Well, what is a tradition? There is no traditional business anymore. We talk about business as unusual. There is no business as usual. I mean, there's still blocking and tackling and, and cash is king and cash flow and things of that nature. But the whole landscape of business has changed. It's changing every day. It's global. It's 24-7. And that's what these kids are being prepared for. I mean, I, we work with businesses who've been around 20, 30 plus years. And they're experienced in what they do. But they don't know how to reach the younger generation. So I, I always say there's a generational divide. And businesses who are experienced need to learn from the young generation. So they you know, essentially need to learn from each other. They do. Let's talk a little bit about Concordia University. Because I think parents will love this aspect as well. Well, we're a private Christian university uh, in Irvine. Uh, we've been uh, there for 40 years. Uh, we have an enrollment of uh, closing in on 5,000. Uh, at the undergraduate level, 1,500 undergraduates, um, and they live on the campus. And so it's a liberal arts core with the professional uh, programs in, in business. So our business students have a, a two-year immersion in the liberal arts. So they learn about thinking, reading, writing, and all this as well as the competency in the business discipline. Let's talk about some of your background with Concordia University in Irvine. Well, I uh, joined the, the university in 2001 as Executive Vice President for University Relations, coordinating external relations, fundraising, and uh, all of those sorts of activities. Uh, but then in 2007, I actually left. Uh, that's the problem of being an entrepreneur. Uh, I came <laughs> up with an idea to create a, a nonprofit organization called Faith and Work Life that puts on workshop seminars on how to integrate faith and work. So I went out and raised uh, about $350,000 for the startup as a nonprofit uh, and did that for about three years. But if you remember 2007, 8, and 9, where the recession was, the toughest time to raise money. And so I saw that we were beginning to run out of money. And the time to look for money is not when you're out of money. You want to look ahead six months and see when you're going to cross that line of running out of money. So um, I had the opportunity at that point in time to bring in uh, sort of an operations person and basically replace myself. And then Concordia said, well, why don't you just come back here and come back and help us with our external relations programs again. And uh, so I went back to the university. So I was there for seven, left for three, and then now back for three more. So you've not just been in academia, you've been in the trenches of entrepreneurial life. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's fun and uh, it's, challenging, it's raising money. It's kind of addicting, money. right? It is kind of addicting. Yeah. Uh, helping other businesses. And once you do become a successful business owner, I mean, what do you define success as really, right? Right, and so you give back and you help others. Right. You pass those experiences along to, right. to the young people so we can prepare the next generation. Uh, they're going to be the leaders of this uh, country. And essentially giving them shortcuts on what to avoid, how to avoid spending money incorrectly. Well, yeah. So one of the things I tell the speakers, because I give them sort of a little list of address these things. But one thing we want every speaker to address is what is it that you wish someone told you <laughs> back then that you learned now right. so that we can learn from their mistakes. Right. And uh, while most of the speakers are successful and they get all of these stories, they do have the stories of things that went wrong, strategies they thought would work that didn't work and why they didn't work. We even had one speaker who talked about how her company uh, went under and what she learned from that experience so that um, they're also learning from entrepreneurs. Now she's, you know, they bounce back and they do another, uh, another startup or another business, but what they learned uh, that way. Thank you, Stephen, for being with us and sharing with the audience at Teen Entrepreneur Academy. Any last words for, to get people going to your website? The website is cui.edu forward slash TEA. Well, if, if someone has a passion in their heart or an idea in their mind, the biggest challenge is coming up with a workable plan. And that's what we do. We actually help them create the plan to sort of realize the dreams and visions that they have or at least come up with a workable plan. And the thing is, people don't take the time to write the plan. We have a theology professor at Concordia. And, and uh, I remember we were working on one of our papers and he said, sometimes I don't know what I think until I see what I write. Uh -huh. And so the discipline of writing this down, asking questions, refining it, is really an exercise that we take them through as well. And on that note, I have to say, as no matter what business I work with, writing is, is so essential. Con the con it creates the content for your business. You know, it, the content that's driven for your mission statement. What is your purpose? What That's going to be on your website. Uh, content, which comes from the umbrella of, of writing. We were just talking about this yesterday. Charlotte's Web is an example. Right. Yeah, I love that novel. It's a classic um, marketing novel. Uh, Charlotte was one of the greatest marketers of all time. Absolutely. And actually, we, we tell the, uh, our students to keep an idea journal because yeah. the ideas are going to be coming to them all the time. And, and to see opportunities as problems and just walk around and begin to see things, then eventually you want to evaluate those ideas, but keep an idea journal. This is such good information. You want more information? It's easy. Go to cui.edu forward slash TEA. Stephen, what are some of the other unique aspects of this program? I know there are many. Well, you know, being on campus for the whole week, I have to break it up. So on Wednesday, we take them surfing at San Onofre State Beach. We take them to the Endless Summer Surf Camp, which is founded by Jason Sen, an entrepreneur. He took his passion for surfing and created a business of surf camps. He has three camps, one in Hawaii, Costa Rica, and Southern California. So what I do is I've, I've prepaid for anyone who wants to have surf lessons, and maybe only half of them do. Some actually had never even been to the beach. I've never even been surfing. And so it's longboarding. And so we have surf lessons for an hour and a half. And San Onofre is just a wonderful wave for a beginner. Then after the surf lessons, we go up and we spend 45 minutes with the founder of the surf camp, where he talks about how did he take this idea for a surf camp and his passion and actually create a business out of it. So he gives them real life lessons. And of course, they love the surfing. But then since we're off campus and we have the bus, as we're driving back to the campus, our goal is to be back by noon for lunch, we stop off and we visit companies. So this year we're going to stop and visit Oakley, the uh, glass, you know, sunglass manufacturing company. So we're going to have a tour of Oakley, and they're going to see glasses being made and just a, an innovative corporate headquarters. I don't know if you've been to the corp, uh, Oakley facility. It's just so dynamic, and the kids can really relate to it. Basketball court. No. Basketball and tanks in the front and just all of this fantastic stuff. And then from there... We're going to stop by a medical device manufacturing company, Massimo, so they can see how they're making medical devices and things of that nature and get a presentation. So we go out and visit a few companies, then come back to campus and get back to work on our business plans. It's great. And a week in California is not a bad way to spend your uh, time in July. No, it's a great. And, and we get people. I got some coming from Canada, China. Uh, we had Vietnam last year. Uh, last year, states, Oregon, New York, Florida, Texas. Michigan, Maine, uh, but the majority are sort of Southern California, Los Angeles, San Diego, Riverside County. And, and really, what a great jumpstart uh, idea. You were you, the Teen Entrepreneur 
Academy plants the seed that you can go off and do what you love, do what you love in life. You know, instead of working for, you know, I'm not discounting working for someone else, but um, there's a value to having a purpose and, and having a gift in life that you're given. Well, that was the other thing I forgot to mention. In their business plan, every business plan must contain a section on the nonprofit that they're going to support from the proceeds of their business once they are in a position to do so. But with the young people today in high school, they already know which causes they're going to be behind, whether that's the rescue mission or the community centers in their neighborhood. Uh, we had one, uh, I remember last year, one of the girls wanted to uh, put together a program for um, juvenile delinquents when they get released from juvenile hall to give them education and training and special tutoring and counseling to get them back into education mm -hmm. or the workplace. So they see their problems around in their communities and, and they want to be active and come up with solutions. And so actually creating a business and having a business is not only a way to support themselves, but it's a way to give back and support the community. So they are already very in tune with helping others and making the world a better place. And so all these teams come together from all over the world essentially and they build new camaraderie, new friendships. Yep. They will last them a lifetime. Build communities. Yes. They're building communities. Well, I honor you for bringing the Teen Entrepreneur Academy to the audience. Thank well, you. It's just an idea and a passion and, you know, it's a privilege to help people and, you know, sort of pay it forward with what we already know. I mean, Concordia has the facilities. We've got the curriculum and, I mean, why not? And some fun. Let's add in fun in there. Thank you, Stephen Christensen, founder of TEA, Teen Entrepreneur Academy. I'm Lisa Caprelli, Brian Gaps. Thank you for being with us at the Business Experience Show.